Hi everybody, welcome back to another exciting addition to Programming for Engineers. So this is one of the most important topics that we're introducing today, uh, and one of the main reasons why we spend the effort learning a language such as Java. Okay, and what we're doing is we're introducing a topic called object-oriented programming. Sometimes people call it OOP, right? You see it abbreviated that way, object-oriented programming. Exceptionally powerful concept, widely used all through industry. It's exceptionally popular and used all over the place. Okay, now the C programming language is not object-oriented. That's one of the reasons why, as I mentioned in previous videos, kind of numerous times, there's different trade-offs between different languages. Um, some are better at some things versus others. And so we're, so because C does not enable us to go into looking at object-oriented programming, we're gonna use Java as part of our way of kind of introducing this, this um, concept. And this is used across multiple programming languages, okay? Now I'm gonna introduce this in a way where we're gonna talk about, we're gonna limit this video to talking about objects and classes, what they are, and I'm gonna start this by connecting it to what you already know, okay? So let's think of structures in C. Um, we've looked at these numerous times. We've looked at this example a whole lot where we look at something like a student structure, right? And basically what we're doing is we're encapsulating data that belongs together, right? So you have something like a student, right? This is some data that belongs together. So you conceptually think of a student as maybe having a first name, last name, age, maybe a gender, GPA, whatever, right? This data that belongs together. And effectively what we're doing is we're building our own data type, right? We're building our own data type. It's a custom data type. We can define it different ways. We can add these different attributes or these data members, right? We can add them, take them away, whatever we want to do, All right? So we're encapsulating them together. And we've seen that that's super, super powerful because then we can do things um, using dot notation uh, what we've done a number of times where we basically do something along the lines of this, where we instantiate, where we have this as our data type, okay, and then we have a um, we have a variable of that type, right? Say called s, and we could do things like s dot right um, age, for instance right, where we're using dot notation to get e each data member, okay? So that works an extremely similar way to a, to a concept in Java, okay? But we're gonna add some functionality to this that does not exist in the same way in C. So let's, let's look at, so we have this idea of structures and we have this, um, a similar concept with some differences in Java called a Java class, okay, a Java class. So let's look at a Java class. In particular, I want you to look at this information here. And just like structures, we've got these so-called data members, okay, and they're encapsulated in a data type here. Okay, they're encapsulated in a data type that we can give a name to, say called student. Okay, now remember, the name of that class must be in its own file, and that file must have the same name, all be student.java. Okay, so we have all these data members that belong to the class, and that effectively is doing the same thing as our, uh, our student structure that we saw previously. We're encapsulating these attributes together. We're now building a data type that we can call student. And what we're gonna see is we're gonna be able to do something very, very similar in which we can say, we can do something like defining a student and say student dot something, right? Student dot blank, right? Student dot um, age, student dot GPA, okay? Um, so let's, before we do that, let's, let's go, let's, let's back up a second. Let's, let's look at how we can kind of approach this, okay? So um, let's talk about the difference between what is a class versus an object. Okay, so object-oriented programming, as you would assume, has to do with objects, right? And it's a little bit more than that. It has to do with these two really fundamental different concepts called classes and objects. Now, I think this is not a super difficult thing to get the general idea 
Okay, but object-oriented programming in practice takes a lot of time and experience to get really good at it. All right, so don't don't be worried if it takes you a while. I, I actually do not expect people to become um, exceptionally good at this in this brief part of the semester that we have for it. What I expect is that you're able to understand some of the fundamentals, and then you're going to build upon them later on. Okay. Now, a class is kind of like is your generic construct. So think of like a car, right? And then you have these objects, which are these instance of a class, right? So you have all these different types of cars, right? You can have an Audi, a Nissan, a Volvo, Subaru, whatever, right? And they have all their different unique properties, right? So you've got all these basically unique instantiations of each particular car, right? So you could think of this as almost being, um, like a cookie cutter, the class is the cookie cutter, and then each cookie that you create with that is the actual object. So here, the cookie cutter is the class, and the cookies themselves are the objects, okay? So let's look at it a little bit more specifically with this. All right, let's take this as an example of going back to the student class first object, right? How would we identify each one, okay? So let's look at this example. It's very, very similar to what I just showed a moment ago. Right um, here, we've got all these different attributes, all these different data members about a particular student. Right, so here we've got all we basically have the data members, okay, just like our struct, okay, and down here in the main function, okay, I'm defining a student called Adam, okay, called Adam. Okay, this here is effectively is the object, okay, where this entire thing kind of is the class, okay. So you can think of the, the class, the class in particular is we've got these defining the, the properties, first name, last name, age, GPA, right, the properties themselves. The object says, okay, the first name is equal to something. First name is Adam, last name is Smith. Age is 20, GPA is 3.2, okay? So the object is the actual instantiation of it. And I can have lots of objects that are of type student, right? I have this one student class that's like the cookie cutter, right? And I have many instances of it. I can have many, many different students that are all instantiating and have unique properties of those of those elements that are defined in the class. Okay, so the class is defining these what what defines a student, right? What are the different variables that define a student? And then the object says, well, okay, here are all of the unique properties. Okay, or here's all the differentiations where we have many many different students that are of that of that type. Okay. All right. So um, that is we're gonna what we're gonna do over a sequence of videos. I want to take this further, okay? But I'm gonna try to keep this. This is such a fundamental concept. I think there's a lot of value in keeping this really, really short, okay? Because it hitting some of the fundamentals, okay? Notice a couple things. I also want to point out before I end the video, just just to um, point out a couple little nuances here. Notice the dot notation. Super similar to what we saw in C. Okay, it really works the same way. We're saying the name of the data type, right? Instead of a struct, it's an object. And we're saying dot to get at the elements that are, um, that belong within that object, right? Just like how we got all the data members of the structure, okay? The other thing I wanna point out is we have this thing here called new student. Okay, just to point out one other um, thing that is um, similar to, or, or has to kind of compare it to C, is this is effectively allocating heap memory for that um, for a type student. So that's actually that's kind of equivalent or very similar to in C when we were using malloc. Okay, where we say new student. Okay, that's allocating space on the heap for that object. Okay, for that that object that we're calling Adam. Okay, now. We notice I do not include free anywhere in here. In Java, you do not have to. Okay, it will do it automatically. 
All right, it's a concept called garbage collection that I'm not going to go into right now. We'll talk about later. But I, wanted, I do want you to just kind of recognize that when we say new something in Java, what we're doing is we're actually allocating space on the heap. Okay, and then the one other kind of nuance is that don't worry about freeing memory. Java does it automatically, something called garbage collection that we'll see later. Um, and it's not necessarily a good thing, right? It's easier for a programmer that not have to worry about it, but there actually are some disadvantages that we'll talk about later, okay? So that kind of just talks about this particular example, right? So that we kind of understand how it works, kind of compare it to C, right? I'm gonna keep the video short, so I'm gonna stop now, right? But what we're gonna do, is we're gonna build on this, right? Over a sequence of videos, and I'm gonna build kind of a much more thorough, longer program that has multiple classes, instantiates a bunch of different objects and everything, uh, kind of building like a university um, software system, okay, so that we can use it as our way of understanding some of the fundamental concepts of object-oriented programming, okay, but that's for future videos. In the meantime, stay safe and healthy.